if I was ever going to write a book, I swear to God, right? This is what I'd call it, be called. Something like this. Thames, why your business is absolutely doomed or blessed before you even start, right? I know it's like, but it's not like, not like Thames is in football, team. And, you know, as, as people that would be born on the far side of the bridge, they'd call it a theme. You know, T-H-E-M-E, right? Like, there's just... I'm just noticing this all the time, right? Now, I'm, because I'm going to get taking an interest in it now, I'm going to get better at it, right? But because I deal with so many people all the time, I notice these themes, themes running through their lives or running through the patterns that they do business or whatever else, right? So, for example, like, in our insurance business, we've done, like, 2,800 claims, right? So that's 2,800 people stood in front of me or my staff, told us the whole story. Um, Cardone says... When you get to kind of mastery level in your business, you get you get blessed with the ability to predict outcomes, right? So you know what's going to happen before before it even happens, right? So like, we used to know who was going to we we used to know most of the time who was going to be a ball breaker to us before they, they ever even opened their mouth, right? I think we knew before the people themselves knew that they were going to start breaking our balls, right? But I'm I'm noticing this with people quite a lot, right? If a guy sits down in front of me, right, and he he switched on, right? I'm like, this guy's going places no matter what. Like, And to be honest, I think that whatever business he goes into is actually irrelevant after that because he's he switched on, right? And then you get another dude sitting down and he just makes everything so fucking complicated, everything so awkward. And this is people speaking about business ideas as opposed to abs actually speaking about their, their actual physical business. I met a guy there the other day and uh, he, just, um, he just nailed it for me straight away, you know? He has this really successful business and he's doing actually very, very well. And uh, he wanted to do something else. And the other type of work that he's going to do was more like a passion or a labour of love, you know. And I said to him, but do you think you can make more millions at that? Like, do you think you'd be successful? And he just kind of looked at me and says, I'll be successful no matter what I do. And I thought, yeah, I agree with you, like 100%, you know. Whereas the business he's in is a big demand and he's well known. Um, whereas he's going into something that was completely like fairly niche or a little bit kind of curveball of a way of uh, doing business. But the whole thing is, I'm meeting people <clears throat> all the time. And I'm like, this dude's going to have difficulties. This dude's going to have difficulties from the very, very start, you know. And the other thing is, when let's just say you have a business that's suffering, right? That's not doing good, right? Now, look, let's let's say it's doing good, right? If you have a business that's doing good or not doing good, it's all the one, right? Pick one, right? Basically, it's not in the middle. It's either up here or down here. If you have a business that's that's not in the middle, what you think is causing it to be either up or down is not actually the real thing. It's more, that's your opinion of what it is. So I'm talking to people and they're like, oh, this is what happens. You know what? You hear people saying, oh, this is what happens. You know, I, I, I had a rough childhood or I have this and that and this is the problem. Like, no, it's not. The problem is you just keep saying that's the fucking problem, you know. Or people are like, um, you know, oh, look, I just have this going on. And like, it's just, it seems to me that people have a weakness and they just keep playing to that weakness rather than playing to the, playing to the strengths. But it's just an interesting thing. So I'm noticing like with, with really switched on, focused people, right? I'm noticing like these dudes, I bet my life these dudes are going to be really successful no matter what. And I'm also noticing it down here with the dudes that's like, they're they're going they're doomed to fail unless they drastically change the way of thinking and the way of operating. So these are spe these are people speaking about business ideas before they even become a business. And I'm like, this is you know this is going to be difficult. You know, I can see that guy doing really well. I can see him pushing through to the, the all the challenges and obstacles. And I'm like, this guy here is better off just getting a job, in my opinion, because I think he's going to be in for a rough ride unless he changes. So you know. If um if they come and we're doing some work together, I'm like, listen, man, I think you need to change this or that. And um, I wrote this on the page there the other day, but the old education thing gets people going. I, lo I love writing something just about college, right? I love writing just something about college. And like, when you hear them all now digging their heels and going, going up, all right? So I wrote something there. I was like, uh, like cause I, I just think college is a joke, right? College is an absolute joke. If you're going to be a doctor, going to be a solicitor, um, yeah, you have to go to college, right? Um one of those type of things, right? But I'm talking about college is a joke if you think it's going to make you rich or if you think it's going to give you what you need to make you rich, right? So I was like, look, if uh, if the education system is it works, why don't we all speak Irish? What are you bringing a national language into it for? I'm just bringing in the fact that the school system has been teaching us this for fucking 10 years, right? And there's nobody I know, but one or two people that went to specialist Irish schools who are sp fluent at speaking, you know? So, um... 
I, I put that post there and people forgot oh, mad it was hilarious, right? But the whole, but it, look, it's true. But it's always the guys that go to college dig in and say, no, we need college, right? But um, the thing is, the the more the reason why I'm saying to you is, the more you are like, uh, what would you call it? The more you are sold on your own way of thoughts, the more difficult it's going to be for you to move beyond that. Because I always do this thing on my workshops, right? I say, do the pinch test, right? So, you know, you grab the, like, the fattest part of your body, right? <laughs> My uncle, called the entire born. You grab, you grab the, 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 uh, the fattest part of your body, right? And I say, right, grab the fattest part of your body. And some people grab loads, some people grab a little bit, right? Like that, you're pinching that exact amount of fat purely because of every... Sit up you done or didn't do. Every press up you done or didn't do. Every cake or biscuit that you ate, every one you didn't eat, every time, you know. If you kept if you kept missing the takeaways and eating the salads, you'd be pinching less, right? And if you do more of the, 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 the chippers on the weekend, you'd be pinching more, right? And it's the same, it's the same with the wallet, you know. You know, if you're pinching feck all in the wallet, it's the financial decisions and all the thinking that's that's basically making you as broke or as rich as you are right now. And the more that you're willing to stick to your guns in the way you believe is the more that you're likely to stay in the exact same position. Does that make sense, you know? So when I'm talking to people and they're they're uh, they're gonna walk off a cliff and I'm like, listen man, you need to be careful of this here. You know, I know I say, listen, unless you change your way of thinking, you're gonna have difficulties here. And they're like, No, 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 I know this, I know this, and look, you know. Full marks for determination to a certain degree, but these guys are going to have difficulty, you know. Um, and then when you see a guy that's really switched on, really focused, and I always say to people, they know they know nothing, right? Successful people know they know nothing because if anybody says something to them, they'll be willing to listen to it. And then whether they act on it or not is another decision, you know. But the guys that know they know nothing will always be listening, they'll always be here, right? But you just see they have this determination in, in their eyes that they will get through whatever it is, you know, but they're willing to listen to people along the way. And I, there's a cool little picture that goes around the internet of like, it's like a little cartoon picture, two guys uh, digging for diamonds. And one guy is like this much away and he's walking back because he's quit. And the other guy is miles away, but he's still going, you know. And it's just, it's about the determination um, in a lot of these people and the willingness to listen to other people. And I suppose it's the willingness to be wrong. You know, the willingness to allow yourself, I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to try it here. And then if it doesn't work, I'm not going to stop, but I'm going to tilt and I'm going to do something else. But I would imagine that these themes run through people's lives. I've heard a lot of people saying, well, actually not. I've heard a few people saying, a couple of guys at the 10X, the, talk, the speakers, they were saying, uh, you know, when an, when someone comes in for an interview with me, I sit down, do the interview. This is the whole spiel, right? Um, he says, and if I like what I see, I go out and look in his car. He says, I look inside his car. Whatever is going on inside his car is the way it is. So if he has a dirty car, it's going to spill into other areas of his life. If he has a clean car, it's going to stay in it. I was like, okay, that makes sense. And we all know people who have a dirty car, right? And then every now and then they say, ah, the hell with this. I'm going off to get my car valid. And they do a bolt down and they get the car valid. And it's, you know, they get the new little Christmas tree air freshener hanging down there and all that. And it's, uh, it's all good, right? But like a week later, it's back to the same, the same as it is, you know. So there's the same themes running through people's lives, in my opinion, and it's reflected straight in their business. I remember one time we done this job. I suppose this is probably the first time that actually kind of resonated with me. We done this job. It was four, four, four floors of apartments, right? Two, 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 and two, right? And. Do you remember the old dolls' houses where you could open them up and you could see them, right? So because we were in these eight apartments where there was people living in them fairly regularly like at the time, right? Um, it was just like we had a snapshot into eight different people's lifestyle, you know? And uh, it was actually weird that you could see you could see the difference between each person. The happiest person there, one of them, um, one of them was a social housing apartment where the, the person got the apartment from the social welfare at a big discount, right? Um, he was the soundest fella out of them all, you know. Um, I don't know whether that makes any difference. Maybe he just didn't care. He didn't have a big mortgage. Everyone else had a big mortgage. But he was the soundest guy to deal with. And there was other different people there. But you could see the themes running through their lives. I swear to God. Like, we were dealing with them. And, you know, you just deal with someone and you expect them. You, you deal with them and you find them exactly as they are. But then when you go to somebody next door. So, you know, two people have had the exact same catastrophe happen to them. Because we were dealing with... Uh, we were dealing with uh, an insurance claim there. So two people have suffered the exact same catastrophe 
and they behave pure differently. But in this case, eight people suffered the exact same catastrophe, and you could see the difference in the way they are. Some of them thought the sunshine right out of their backside. Some of them said, "Well, look at we're here," and it's not all sound people like. But I could just see you could see the themes running through their life, and then some of them were difficult to deal with from the start and difficult right the way through, and then others were like easy to deal with and right the way through. You know, so I'm just I'm constantly aware of that now, and I think it would be a good idea for people to be just aware of that themselves. Um, that there is teams running through their lives, like because I know there's teams running through my life. Like my my car is only my car never has any dirt in it, right? As in like it doesn't have anything in it, nothing it doesn't have anything. But like there'll be dust, there'll be dust on the dashboard, right? That's that's my thing. So I'm like, look, looks tidy, I'm done. Where you get into Linda's car and like it's always smelling perfect, you know. And she has all bits and bobs because she uses the car for the family more than what. Uh, I'll be just in the Jeep all the time. This is my office, you know. But uh, you can just see these tapes. And then Linda goes in, like, you know, when Linda's in the house, everything is spotless. Like, you know, you can literally eat your dinner off the floor, you know. And then I come in and then put a few things around and I get, get the clatters to move them. But that's the same everywhere, you know. I'm in the office and I'm like, Joe, where'd you put this? Where'd you put that? I'm like, oh, you know, because I'm, I'm just running around a million miles an hour. But listen, guys, just take that on board, right? Look at your business. I guarantee you what you say is causing the upside in your business or what you say is causing the downside in your business is not actually what's really happening or really causing it. I guarantee that it's just that's just your opinion of what's causing it. So get an outside opinion. Get somebody that's close enough to be honest with you but far enough away that they'll, they'll tell you exactly as it is. You know, like a friend of a friend or something. But uh, look, I'll leave it with you. Um, just ask yourself, what's the team running through your... For all the D foreheads, what's the theme running through your life and your business. Right, take it easy guys, have a good evening.